Welcome to Connections. It's good to welcome Peter Finnehan to share with us today. There is a lovely story of being in church one lovely sunny spring morning. The large congregation had listened to an inspiring sermon and had arrived at the Lord's Supper. The minister turned to the congregation and said, the risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, peace be with you, alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. There was a hearty response from all present and also with you, alleluia. The minister then invited all to share the peace with one another. In what to the casual observer could have resembled a dozy doe, the congregation shared the peace with warm handshakes and gentle embraces. This happened many years prior to the pandemic. One gentleman who'd never been seen before was mixing with everyone, offering his hand in greeting, saying quite sincerely, good morning, how are you today? Not the conventional method of sharing the peace, but interesting nonetheless. In our lectionary reading this morning from the Gospel of John and from Acts, we see two different sides of the disciples. First, we see them scared and in hiding. Following Jesus' arrest, with the exception of Peter and John, they were nowhere to be seen, frightened of what would happen to them if they were recognised out and about. They hid in a locked room, a quite understandable bit of self-preservation. And in all honesty, I would have probably been right alongside them. On that first Easter Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, at Jesus' behest, told the disciples that he had risen with those wonderful words, I have seen the Lord. And now, as they continued to hide, scared and probably very confused, the risen Jesus himself is suddenly standing right there in front of them. He greets them. Peace be with you. Seeing the state that they were in and knowing what lay in store for them on Pentecost morning, this greeting may well have been a satirical good morning. How are you today? Fast forward just a couple of weeks and we arrive at the reading from Acts where we see these same people showing themselves to all and sundry as the people of Jesus, confident and brave. Pre Peter has preached to a large crowd where people from many places heard him declare the wonders of God in their own language, proclaiming Jesus as the risen Christ. Peter and John have faced down the mighty Sanhedrin, miraculous signs, healings and other good works brought even more followers. Here we read of the great works of charity, where possessions were shared, property and land sold, and everyone's needs were met. And with great power, these folk who just a few short weeks ago had been hiding, almost frightened of their own shadow, continue to testify to the risen Lord. They are turning the world upside down. But just what has caused this explosion of testimony and courage? The answer can be found at the end of verse 22 of the gospel reading, when Jesus says to his disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Now the dictionary gives these two definitions of the word power the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events, and the ability or capacity to do something or act in a particular way. Now the Holy Spirit has influenced the disciples and given them the ability to act in a particular way. And through their powerful preaching, 3000 people gave their lives to Christ in just one day. Imagine that. And so it is, friends, with us. When we give our lives to Christ, when we proclaim Jesus Christ as our crucified, risen Saviour, we too are filled with the Holy Spirit. 
that self-same Holy Spirit who descended on the disciples and gave them the strength to achieve what they did, fills us and leads us, convicts us, equips us and teaches us to do God's work and to spread the good news of the gospel, not only through preaching as they did, but more importantly, through the way we live our lives. The Holy Spirit works in and through our lives to make us more like Jesus. And as we develop a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit, we're pulled away from the things we do which displease God through the gifts of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The Holy Spirit leads us to be the people God would have us be. Remember the words of Daniel Iverson's hymn, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. And it's important to remember that without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we cannot have a deep and meaningful relationship with our Heavenly Father. The Holy Spirit doesn't force this relationship on us. Rather, we are led, as Paul writes in chapter 8 of his letter to the church in Rome, those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And so, with the Holy Spirit leading us as the children of God to a life pleasing to our Heavenly Father, we can share the peace of Christ with those around us and show them that Jesus still comes today and says, peace be with you. Amen. <laughs>